So welcome back, Nana here. And then in this session, uh, we are going to see about how to quickly create a branched structure. Uh, I'm now muting all of you. Whenever you want to speak, you can uh, uh, press the space bar and then talk is uh, basically press to talk. So with the space bar, you can talk to me. And then if you leave it, it will automatically get locked. Uh, and then uh, in this session, we are going to have a look at uh, a branched structure below uh, the US legal entity. And then uh, you, by which you will be up and running within uh, uh, one or two hours, and then your structure will be ready for uh, your test structure. So let me go there and then share my screen. <clears throat> so here, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to log in with the PRC00 instructor now. If I click on sign in now, I'm not going to log in. In one of the vision instances. So go back and then log in. So we are logging in now through the PRC00. So now I will now open up my, uh, what's called, uh, my this thing now. Uh, so if you go there and see, you have a fusion procurement worksheet, which we are following it up for this complete training, actually. And then we'll open up, and then I'm now going to do only the essentials for a branch structure, actually. On this. We'll open it up, and then do the one. So this one. So you go there, you go up, you go up, go up, go up. So create custom human resource process. We are not going to do it. We are bypassing it. This we are bypassing it. This we are bypassing it. Fourth also, we are not doing it now. Fifth also, sixth, fifth, sixth, seventh, we are not doing it. I will now go straight away and then do the eighth step and manage locations. So let us now go and get manage locations for the training now. For, for the branch structure, I'm going to do it now. So go there. Uh, now it's 9.40. Uh, we have started. We'll now see about how fast we are completing it, actually. So I'll now go there and then create a what's called location. If you want to set up and make runs. <coughs> And then let us know creating location. I'm not going to create a one location for the master org and then one for the child org actually. Go there, paste it, and then iterate, manage locations. Go there, click on it. Let me create a location. One for the master and then one for the child. I'm going to make it now. <coughs> what setting it up? So click on plus now. I'm not going to create. <coughs> so this time I'll now use B01. I hope that uh, nobody would have used it now. Uh, I will now use B01 underscore lock underscore zero. So I'm now following my standard philosophy. I take off it and then put the code now. And then put the description. And then go down. Here, uh, address line one. I will now say it's a B01. Sorry. It's a B01. It is address zero. And then I'll now put that. Now what's called. You go there and then put the code now. Find zip code 10020 and then give it a tap. It'll be coming up fine. I'll now choose one of them. Click on OK by which all the fields will be getting basically populated. So your <coughs> state, city, and county are populated. That's sufficient for this now. Fine. Click on it. And then I click on submit by which my zeroth location is now getting created. So once when it gets created, you can even see this number that is not got created. That one fine. Of course, it's submitted. You go there. So I'll now go and then give B01 and then enter in now. Fine. will now find the location coming over here. So I'll now click it. Create lock, lock one also. This is for the master. And then I'm going to get one more location for my child dog now. Whether it's a B01 underscore lock underscore one now. <clears throat> so for the child dog, I'm going to have only one master and one, one child for this exercise now. Paste it over here and go down. And then I will now put that <coughs> so zip code now 10020 and give it a tap. <clears throat> I will now choose one of them and then click on OK. And then this is sufficient. And then there are plenty are available here. They will be used only with HRMS team and not by the sufficient team actually. This so this much is sufficient on this now. Fine, go that. I will now say B01. Address one is a one. Fine, that is address zero. This is address one. And then click on submit by which both the locations are now created. Click on it. Then I'll go to our sheet and then see what exactly is now the next step now. I click on it. They're not done. So you can even have a look at it. Click on search. You'll now find both the locations available over here now. So the lock zero is for the master org and then lock one for the child org is ready now. So go there, click on it. I will not manage legal entities. I'm not going to do it. No legal entity. I'm not going to use the existing one now. I know this thing. I will not go to the manage chart of accounts value system that. I'm not going to the 13th step of this now of the task. Take a copy of it and then go there, click on done. And then we are going to create it. <coughs> Most please paste it over here now. So manage chart of accounts value sets. I'm going to create it now. Click on it. I will now create three segmental chart of accounts actually. <coughs> you know, go there. So in this place, I will not go and then click on plus now. I will not get the value sets first of all. So it's a B01 underscore. <coughs> Uh, it's a company value set. Company uh, value set one now. So I'm now creating a company value set one. <clears throat> so you know, take top of it. And then put in the description module, I drop down and then you choose the general ledger. So general ledger is not chosen. So here it is a what's called. It's an independent one. I'm not making only an independent one with a character. And then we have a subset is also available here. Make it as a text. And then I will now make it as a two characters now. And Give a save and close which my first company value set is now created. So if you go and then query on a V01, they'll not find it. 
I will not go on the kit. Message. Next one is the department value set. I'm going to create it now. So it's a B01 underscore department underscore value set underscore two. <clears throat> so the department value set. Take note of it. And then put the description. Now. And then drop down the general ledger to be coming at the bottom top now. Go there. And then here I now make it as independent. And then go down. I will now make it as what character and then make it as a text now. So that's it. By which the second value set is now created. So you must enter the maximum length and I don't have to enter the maximum because three now. So that is two, and then this is three. Fine, click on seven close, and then we go on the, go for the final one now. You must search the second value set to be ready. I go click on it. So click on plus. I'll be going and then get the third value set. So B01 <coughs> underscore uh, uh, is accounting CCTG accounting underscore value set underscore three now. Accounting value set, I'm going to use it now. <coughs> so accounting value set. <coughs> So B01 accounting balance and take note of it and then put in the description. And then module is generally just drop it down and becoming at the top. And then I'm going to choose it now. Go there. And then it's again independent now. Go there, click on it. And then go the character. <coughs> and then it is a text. And then it will be having four characters maximum. And that's it. By which we have completed creation of all the three value sets for us. Now, right? I'm not going to get a three segmental chart of accounts for the exercise now. So click on it. Right <coughs> Now, I will now go and create the managing 14th step. I'm going to go for manage accounting calendars. Window. That's on save and close. Whenever you have a save and close and uh, submit buttons, uh, please use it. Not, otherwise, uh, sometimes it will not work properly. So save and close and submit. And that. So manage chart of accounts calendars. When I click on it, let me now create a calendar. Go there. Click on plus now. Let me create a calendar. Accounting calendar I'm going to create now. It's a B01 underscore BCCT underscore Cal1. So I'm now creating a calendar. So take it off it and then put in the description and then go there. So start date is one stroke one stroke 20. And give it have now. And it is a monthly is okay. And nothing else is required. And go there. So I will know how what happens. So once at a year end, I'm going to make it now as adjusting period. And click on next now by which the calendar gets created. So you'll be creating all the periods automatically, not like in EBC. So you have to manually create all the periods. Now it's all automatic. And then you'll be having one adjusting period and also the bottom. And go there. Click on it. Seven close by which the accounting calendar is now created. <clears throat> we are now completing the creation of an accounting calendar. <clears throat> and then we'll now go for the next step. Now, so it's not done. Now we'll now go to the chart of account structures. Now we are going to go on the structure actually. Now it is not If you go on the query on the B01, you'll now find your accounting calendar. Come on, you have Click on that. So we'll now go there and then take a copy of this uh, task name and then go there and then paste it on this place and then click on it. And chart of account structures. Thank you. We'll now go on the get a structure. So go there. And then in the blank, you make a serine of such now. There is only one key flux field as far as financials is concerned. Factor concept will be coming. I go there. You want it. You go to the manage structures. And then here, I will now go on and create a new one. So I will now go and then create a structure actually. Find B01 underscore structure. I'm not creating a structure actually. I'm going to take a bottle. And then put the name. Please do here. Description I'm putting it now. So the delimiter is hyphen now. I'm not keeping it as hyphen and then give a save now. The moment I give a save, the segments, uh, the plus symbol will be coming. I click on save. The segment plus symbol will be coming. I click on plus and then I will not create a segment. So the first segment I'm going to create fine. is a company segment. B01 underscore company. So company segment I'm creating it fine. Take it off a bit now. And then API don't write anything. It will be coming automatically. The system will be creating a unique identifier for the segment actually. Fine. Leave it as such. Let the system create it and go there. And then do not create anything manually. One of my students has modified this and then he had an issue now. So don't do it now. It will be segment number one now. And I will not put this as a prompt. And then I will now paste this as a short prompt now. And then display with this 20 characters. So go there. I will now map it to segment one now. And segment one, I'm going to map it now. And here I will now choose my value set. And go there. I want to drop it down. And then I will now select mine now. <clears throat> so one second. <clears throat> so if you go there, I will now select mine. And click on search now. I'm going to make a search. Search is what B01 and then search for it. It's the company value set which I created. I'm going to do it. It's a two segment, two character one. Fine. Okay, no, no, that. no, no, no. And then here, I, the company is a balancing segment. We have one primary and then two balancing over here. Now, I will not choose the one primary segment. And then save and close by which my first segment is already fine. We'll not go for the second and third segment. Thank you. Contrast now. I'm not going to get the second and third segment. Let's on it. So B01 underscore DPT. Department of the one, take a copy of it and then keep the API name will be coming and paste it over here and then click on the uh, paste it over here. The second segment and then prompt the same thing and then I will not put the short prompt also. Same thing doesn't matter. I'm going to click on 20 characters and then I will not choose the segment two now <clears throat> and then go there, drop it down and I'll make a search. And then here it is not it is not a tappable field actually. You only have to make a search on this now. Go there, I will not search for the B01 and then enter it now. I will not go for the department, department value set and more the maximum three characters now. 
and then department is going to be a cost center i will not make it as a flex field qualifier as a cost center i'm taking it over there so the flex field qualifier is a cost center fine cost seven close now is not completed i will take on pass <clears throat> so if you go there and then here i will not make the accounting fine b01 underscore the segment now you take a copy of it and then put on the ap name ap name will be coming automatically name i'm pasting it description i'm pasting it and then i'm making it as a third one and then the prompt i'm putting it and then here i'll go there and you see acc <coughs> display with this 20 characters and then go there and then column is third segment <coughs> third segment we are mapping it and then drop it down here if you put b01 and then give a tab it is not a tabbable field and so it will not come at all so you only have to make a search it's not coming and go there some fields are like this now because a tabbable field is awarded for the uh, uh, instance actually I'm not going to place. I'm going to choose the accounting one. Fine. I'm okay now. And this is going to be a natural account. So the flux field qualifier for the accounting segment is a natural account. Go there, click on it, and then bring it over there. It's not necessary. So give a save and close by which we are not completed the creation of three segments for my structure. Actually, give a save and close. This is not completed. It will not go there. And then if you go there, make a query on this B01. You will not find it. Out. <clears throat> go there, click on done now. It will not go there. I will not create a manage structure instances. We go there. Structure instances. I'm going to make it now. Fine. Click on plus now. I'm not going to create a chart of accounts. Fine. Go there. Fine. So it's a B01. That is a transactable one now. Fine. COE. I'm making it now. Fine. B01 COE is the one. So take a copy of it now. And then put the AP name. It will be coming. Fine. Name. I'm pasting it. Description. I'm pasting it. Fine. So both enabled and dynamic is all. That's okay. Fine. Go there. Click on it. I will not choose my B01. <clears throat> my B01. I'm going to choose it now. <clears throat> Where is my B01? Is it in the top? Come on, it is not visible anywhere. Go round, go round, go round, go round. Slowly, 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 slowly. It is visible here now. My B zero one structure I'm putting. So the moment I put the structure, everything will be coming up. And then we have to make it as required. This is not so in EBS now. Fine, we have to make it as required. Fine, click on it and then click on it now. Required as a must. Otherwise, you will not be able to deploy it. Actually, fine. Required as a must. So there must be one balancing segment and then one cost center and then one uh, uh, natural account segment in your thing. So if you make it as required, then only it will not get deployed properly. Fine, click on okay now. <clears throat> This is not so enables. It takes up automatically there. Go there, click on it. So go there. So we can have n number of cost centers, and then one accounting segment, and then uh, we can even have uh, other. Th there are so many other things on there. What's called on the flux field qualifiers actually. So we made all the three things required. Fine, for that click on seven close by which this is not copied. So go on to make a query on this B zero one, and then how we got it now. So once we see, it, we'll be seeing it. Fine, click on done, and then we're not deployed. So the deployment is going to start. So once when the deployment is completed, fine, it's not running. I right click and then duplicate now. <clears throat> This place, if you go on and have a look at it, right? so if you go to the manage chart of accounts value sets <coughs> and go to this place, if you go to this place, <coughs> you go to the setup and maintenance. So in the bottom, the key flex fields will be coming once when the deployment is completed. Click on it and then go there. Go to the search now and then paste this one. And enter it now. I will not query for the B01 now. So when I query for the B01, B01, I'm going to query. So you can now see the thing is coming. So here you see the uh, deployment has started. So you are able to key, see the key flex fields also over here now. The key flex fields are coming up on this now. So as and when the deployment starts, it will be coming. So it is now running now, and even while running itself, it has come. So otherwise, only after deployment, you will be able to see the association of the key flex field to the, your value set structure. That's it. I'm going to click on it. So there is no matter. So I will now again go to the value sets, and then I will now populate the value. I think it will be getting uh, compiled properly. We won't be having any problem. I will now go to the company, and then I will now give the values over here now. Fine. So select it now. The screen itself has got locked actually. Okay. But don't do Nana. Wait uh, till that runs. It uh -huh. may create problem. <laughs> it's okay. Bhakti is saying, please, please wait till it gets there. What happens there? Then, oh God, it is getting delayed. <laughs> okay. She is asking me to wait for it. Now, uh, once with the COA is getting completed, then you can go for the primary ledger. And then afterwards, we will not. Uh, specific ledger options, all these things you can do, but we have to wait for the COA to get completed. Now. We will not listen to Bhakti. She's saying, wait, 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 don't go ahead of this now. Fine. So let the deployment get completed, and then afterwards you go ahead now. That's what she's saying. So I will not go there, and then afterwards we will not go on the wait now. <clears throat> so the 35th entity is now getting processed now. Fine. Once the processing is getting updated, you'll be able to see a tick mark on the deployment status now. <clears throat> Come on, come on. Deployment is in still progress now. And I have to get deployment has got completed. Uh, <clears throat> Bhakti, you are a fin guy, na? You know financials. Mm. Uh, mine actually like uh, I started career with tech, uh, techno functional kind of stuff. Uh -huh. So sometimes get into a P2P role, sometimes in a O2C role. So mix of something. 
Anybody else here in financials actually? Having a background of financials. So we are now creating only a skeleton interview structure, skeleton financial structure actually. So once when that is completed, we will be up and running very fast. Okay, deployment completed successfully. Aye, yeah, we got it. Okay, come on, okay, now fine. We'll be getting a tick mark. Oh, yeah, now fine. Go that click on it. Now it's done. Fine, go that click on it. I will not keep my customer on the uh, company segment and then click on the manage values. The company one, I'm going to manage values. I will become plus now fine. I will not go to get two companies for the success. Go that 10. Go that 10. Go there. And then I will now make this what? Allow budgeting, allow budgeting, allow budgeting. Summary is no fine. This is how it has been done. Thank you, one person. So, summary is no allow budgeting and allow posting are yes. 11, then 11. I don't know much about all these things. Now, fine. These are all called segmental qualifiers. So, I'm now keeping the defaults over here as a segmental qualifier. Click on seven, close. Now. You know that. I'll now go there. Go to the, what's called the department. Now. Department. And then I will now go to the manage values. Now. <clears throat> go there. Click on plus. I will now create two departments for this exercise. 100. 100. <clears throat> And then let us again allow budgeting and allow posting is yes, no fine. Click on plus now. Now go for one more department 101 and then give it a 101. And then this is okay, fine. The sort order and all I know. I'm not, I don't know anything about it now. So the segmental qualifiers, the defaults, I'm keeping it as yes, no fine. With that, click on save and close now. The second value set is now completed. So we have given the flex field qualifiers during uh, your structure creation. Now we are giving the segmental qualifiers over here. So go to the accounting and then click on that is the manage values. And then I'm going to create four values for this now. For this XX, <clears throat> I have not created four, four values for this now. Uh, that is sufficient. That is not sufficient actually. When you are doing the purchasing accounting, you have to go for more and more. You watch my purchasing accounting videos. So I will now make it as a set now. I have now, to begin with, I am now giving only four. The, when you are going to test your purchasing accounting, then afterwards you may have to create even another 10 numbers basically. 1001. So 1001, I will now make it as a liability. Remember it now. Fine. 1001 is a liability. Fine. Click on plus now. So this is an asset is a liability and go there. 1002 is an expense now. 1002 is an expense. I will not make it as an expense now. I will not make it as an expense. And then here, finally, one owner's liability is required. 1003 is a owner's liability. 1003 is a owner's equity. So this much is sufficient for us to test our uh, purchasing accounting. But again, we are now created more accounts and then watch my previous videos and then do it accordingly. So we are in the process of creating a, a what happens a quick enterprise structure and go there. So 1001 is a liability, remember asset liability and then expense and then one is equity paying on seven close. We have completed everything. <clears throat> and give a seven close. This activity is now completed. Now we can go there. So we go there and then we are now going to create these values. So what is these values are now completed? So we go to the manager primary ledger. Take a copy of the task name and go there, click on it, and then we'll now paste this. We are now going to create our primary ledger. <clears throat> so click on manage primary ledgers. So we are creating the ledger now. So click on plus and then let us now create a quick ledger now. So it is a B01 underscore primary underscore ledger. Oh God, all of them. I don't like capitals. B01 underscore primary underscore ledger. <clears throat> so we'll not take a look at the description. Now. And then chart of accounts, I will now choose the B01 now. Come on, come on, come on. That's the B01. B01 chart of accounts is there now. So it has been deployed. So I put on it. B01 chart of accounts. Accounting calendars again, B01. B01 is my accounting calendar. And go there. Currency is USD. Then these two segments, I'm now leaving it. So your chart of accounts has got four C's. Fine, chart of accounts. Your uh, ledger has got four C's, chart of accounts, calendar, currency, and convention, actually. I will now use this now. Fine, keep on seven close by which my primary ledger is ready. Seven close is more done. <clears throat> so the ledger is now getting created. Now, fine, okay. So we'll now go for the next step now. Now, primary ledgers uh, will not go, go to the specific ledger options now. Fine, right? us. So the next activity is what specific ledger options on this now. So specific ledger options. We will now go to the primary ledgers in FSM area. So it is now completed. Fine, right? click on it. We'll now go to the FSM area and then query for, query for the primary ledger. Right? I am already in the FSM. I am in the financials. I'll now go there. It is managed percentage, primary percentage, led to percentage. Fine. I am now querying it in the in the FSM area now. Manage primary ledger. So after having done this, you go there. I will now go to the specific ledger options. Fine. Once when you query on the primary ledger, then we had to go for specific ledger options in FSM. Now. Fine. Specific ledger options, we had to choose the scope now. Fine. Click on scope selection. And then let me scope. I'll choose my scope. Fine. Go there. Click on select NAT. And then go there. Click on it. And then you know, go to apply and task. And then query my B01. B01 is the one fine. entry now. Fine. Go to great. So it's not coming fine. Select it and then click on seven close by which you know go to specific ledger options. Specific ledger options has got two things to do. As far as the skeleton interface structure is concerned, we had to give the accounting, need and dense accounting. Right? So 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone, 1003, there is a owner's equity. So we are going to put it now and then go there, click on it. <coughs> journal, journal language, I'm going to drop it down and make it as an English, American English. So go there, drop it down. 
other negative than American English. No? So go down and then make it. So that's it. Fine. I know only these two things. I, I don't know if you know GL, you can now do a lot of things on the journal processing. And then here, average balancing, sequencing, etc. etc. All these things you can do. Since I know nothing, three other path along. <coughs> well, I click on it. And then I, this is more than sufficient. There are the two mandatory fields. I'm not completing the specific ledger options. I go that click on seven close now. So 1003 is a one as equity account. I go that click on seven close by which the specific ledger options task is now completed. Now. Go there, go to the next one. Now. So after having done this now, find specific ledger options. You will now go on the assign legalities and then select an ad now. And assign legalities. Fine, go there. So assign legalities. So we'll now use the assign legalities one now. Fine. Assign balancing segment, not assign. So it is not the one now. Fine. Go up now. You can see <clears throat> if you go up, you can see assign legalities. So go to the assign legalities. The scope is already selected. We can go to the task directly now. Assign legalities. The scope is already. Otherwise, you have to select the scope and then come on. Fine, go there, come on. I will now give a plus and then let me uh, add this now. Fine. US legal entity and go to add it now. US legal. I will not use the existing legal entity for this exercise now. Click on search now. You're getting it now. Oh, US three legal entity is now coming. Fine. Somebody has modified it. I don't know. Fine. Doesn't matter. Uh, let it be any legal entity because legal entity is the heart of a structure actually. Fine. Click on apply and then done. So it is US three legal entity. Remember, it is a US three legal entity. So somebody might have modified it. Fine. That point. Concept of close. I thought that US legal entity there. US legal entity is not there. So this activity is now completed. And go there. Assign balancing segment values to yeah, ledger now. Fine. Legal entities. So assign balancing segment values to legal entities now. So I will not go to the assign balancing segment to legal entities and not ledger. There is a difference between these two. You will learn it in the financial training. And go there. Assign balancing segment values to legal entities. I'm going to go there. US3, remember. Ours is US3. And go there. US3 is there. So click on plus now. I will now have only one balancing for this exercise now. And go there. We have got two company segments now. We will not use only one balancing. And go there. Click on seven close by which this activity is now completed. So click on seven close. <clears throat> so we have done it and go there, go there. And then afterwards, assign balancing segment values is now completed. Now we are going to review and then submit our configuration. This is a skeleton financial structure which are completing now. And go there. So we will now go on and review and then submit. Review and then submit accounting configuration. This is the one. So the scope is already selected for it. And go there, click on it. So review and submit accounting configuration. We're going to do it now. It's a concurrent program. It is a ESS job. The enterprise scheduler service job will be running now. <clears throat> go there. So 107 is now submitted. And then you'll now right click and then have a look at it. And I click and then go to the school duplicate and then have a look at it. So we know how to look at it. So go to the tools and then go to the scheduled process and then have a look at it. 107 is the scheduled process which is going to run for uh, submitting it now. So 107 is passed. So once when that is completed, if you go to the manage primary ledger, you can even see a green tick mark on this. So you now go to the manage primary ledger. So the top will be having the manage primary ledger. And then it will be queried. So once we query it, you now get a green tick on this now. And go click on B01 and enter now. You now get a green tick. It is now still in process now. It is now saying in process now. If you go to this place and then wait for the concurrence to complete now. 107, 108 is running now. So once when all of them are completed, you'll get a green tick mark. So this completes the, the skeleton financial structure creation now. <clears throat> the skeleton financial structure creation is now complete. You see, I did it in 20 minutes now. I started at 9.40, it's 10 o'clock, it's completed. Are you clear? Avinandan, are you clear upon this now? Any doubts? Uh, yes, sir. It is clear. Uh, uh, very nice. Sir, only one thing I wanted to know. I have heard that this can be done using uh, FBDI, that Excel. Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I don't know. Fine. How to? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll figure it out. FBDI, we can do it. Now. It is not a FBDI. It is called rapid implementation. Fine. Okay. You you have this now. Fine. Rapid implementation is already there on this man. Right. If you see in my in your drive, you already have it. Now. Fine. I, 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 for a order management setups, I already until I go to the fusion procurement October 19, and then here mm. you will now find on the freebies, I think, fine. not freebies. Yeah, here rapid implementation up to OM setups is already added now. Okay, up to OM okay. setups is now completed, so it is a very fast way of doing it now. Fine, up to 11, it will now teach you up to OM setups also. That is free for you, I think. Okay, so okay. free for okay. you. So you can try with the rapid implementation and then how to bring it fast. And the complete financial activity, we can bring it fast. Okay, okay. Thank you. So go to the monitor process and go for it now. That has been given to you free for you for this training actually. So it's all succeeded. You go back and then see this now. Fine, go click on it. I will now re -query. So click on enter. Fine. You have to get a green tick mark. One the chi. We got it. So once when the skeleton financial structure is completed, fine, go click on it. We will now log out and log in. On sign out and sign out. So that the changes will be easily recorded in the system of come out of it and then you know log out and log in. So click on sign in now. So we are signing in. So the skeleton financial structure is now completed. We go ahead on our structure creation. So it's not done. So we'll now go there. So we'll now go on and create our business unit. 
and primary ledger is ready and then look at the state of the compound a tick mark is not come over here fine brother so we'll not take a copy of the managing business unit you know go there go ahead and then do it thank you for that no go there what is the setup and maintenance <clears throat> I'm doing. I'm using US three now. My US three legal ID. Remember, I click on search now. <clears throat> I have no go on the treatment business unit. So manage business unit. So go there. <clears throat> so in the manage business unit, we will now see the US one. What are the reference data set where they are using it now? Find the US one. We will now see what are the reference data set. We will now use the same one over here. Sorry, this is US one now. And now see what are the reference data set they are using. Now. I click on it now. So the reference data set I want to have a look at it now. Find the so it is US one BU set. So they are using US one B set. I will also use the same thing. Okay. US one B set is the one they are using it now. Go ahead, click on it. So we'll now go there. Put the manager user US one B set. I'm going to use it from there. So click on plus. Then it will create the business unit. <coughs> and the complete detailed one is there. And then we are not following that. Actually, we are now coming in and then quickly creating our structure. Actually, so we'll go there. It's a B zero one. Let's go. Business unit. So location is not mandatory. You can even give it. Fine, doesn't matter. No harm in it. No. Location do not have any. Uh, underscore zero. I'm going to give it now. So give the is a US one. U set actually. Give it a tab now. It's not coming. Fine. Drop it down and then make a search. So if it's not a tab or file, you go then make a search now. Fine. It's not there also. US one business with U set. So US one and then I make a search. <clears throat> so if this place is US one, not on this place. No. The name. Searching for it. Come on, what is this? What is the mistake here? I make it. I don't know. Make only US no. Set name. One of the oh, both of them are mandatory. That is what it is saying. Both of them are mandatory. And US no. Set code and set name here to make it. Okay, come okay now. It's not coming. Oh God, it is not coming. Oh, US one only is coming. Oh God, I don't know. Make full. Find make a search now. In US one. Use one BU set. I want it. I will use this one. That is what they are using it for the uh, US one business unit. Thank you. Sir. So I am now putting this over here. I will now put this one. Thank B zero one underscore business unit. Any doubts? You ask me there and there now. Location is not a mandatory. You can leave it as is. Thank you. Sir. Seven close by which my manager is also not mandatory. Thank you. Seven close. So US one BU set is the one I am using it for my business unit also. All of them are small now. I use small letters. Thank you. Sir. So then afterwards, assign business unit business function is the one thing. Go there, check on it. Now go to the place. We have to go to the FSM area. It is not a common task. If you go and then try to do it, it will not work at all. Fine. Some of them are uh, basically uh, what's called FSM specific, uh, scope specific. So if you go and then try to avoid, it will not show you a business unit at all. You know, it will not end up an error. Now fine. Go there, check on it. So certain tasks are scope specific, which you cannot execute from this place. Now go there, check on it. I will not go to this place on the FSM area. I will not choose the financials and I will not paste this. Area. Assign business unit function. I go there. So here I have to choose it. So it is not a scope. Is not US business business unit. I will now make a change of this. Now fine, click on it. I will now make a change. Fine, go there. Click on it. Select map. So let me change it now to my business unit. Go there. Click on it. I will now make a change. Go there. So B zero one and then enter now. <clears throat> so business unit is now fine. Click on save and close now. It is not done. So once when it is done, I go there. So billing and revenue management. I am enabling it. Fine, go there. I am enabling something. Something you can do it now. Expense management. Incentive compensation. Materials management is required for inventory or creation. Fine. If you don't do it, it will not come at all. I will not show you the error. And payables, invoicing is okay. Payables, payment is okay. Procurement is basically for purchasing. Fine, I'm not doing it. Fine, procurement contracts management, evaluating and project accounting is not there. Receiving. So the requisitioning and receiving or client BU functionality, I'm not enabling it. I will not enable it later on. I'm going to click on it. I will not put same. Something else I'm putting it. Fine. The important ones, I'm not doing it. I will not put the primary ledger over here. Fine, B01. I'm putting the primary ledger. Enable it. So drop it down. So B zero one is the one. Fine, click on search. <clears throat> so B zero one, then click on search. It's coming. Fine, select. Then click on OK. So the legal entity is coming. Fine. So US three legal entity is already associated. I have not enabled the important ones like middle management for uh, this thing. And then I have not done for purchasing also. Fine. All these things are not done. I will not do it a bit later. Fine, click on seven close and I'll show it to you. Fine. It's not done. So we'll not go there. Go hard on this one. The assigned business unit is not done. Half of it now. Fine. Go there. So this set I am not doing it. So manager is not. This I am not doing it. This I am not doing it. Fine. This facility ships also. I'm not doing it. This I'm not doing it. This I'm not doing it. So I'll now go to the management layout straight away. Remember, all of them have been taught in our normal training, and then we are in a fast-paced one, and so we are now skipping so many steps on this now. In a normal training, everything is taught actually. So we are now quickly. We had to go on and create it. Management layout. 
ಅದು ನಾವು ಕೂಡ ಕೇಳಿ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಡಿಗ್ರಿ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಫಾರ್ ಸಮ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಹಾವ್ ಅ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ಫಾರ್ ಮೈ ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಫಾರ್ ಬ್ರಾಂಚ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಹಾವ್ ಇಟ್ ನಾ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ಬಿಜಿ ರೋ ಒನ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಕೋರ್ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ ಆರ್ ಬಟ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ವಾಂಟ್ ಡು ಇಟ್ एवरीथिंग ವೆರಿ ವೆರಿ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ಯಾಟಿಕಲಿ ಫಾಲೋ ಮೈ ಪ್ರೊಸೀಜರ್ ಆಫ್ ನಾಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ವೇ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಫಾರ್ ಫಾಸ್ಟ್ ನೋ ಫೈಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಅ 2 ಮಿನಿಟ್ ಮಾಡಲ್ ನೋಡಲ್ ನೋ ಬಿ 0 1 ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ನೋ ಸೇ 0 ಇಸ್ ಅ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ನೋ ಫೈಂಡ್ ಯೂಸೇಜ್ ಇನ್ ಇನ್ವೆಂಟರಿ ಮ್ಯಾನೇಜ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ನೋ ಗೋ ದೇ ಬಿ 0 1 ಅಂಡ್ ಟ್ಯಾಪ್ ದಿ ಬಿಸ್ನೆಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ so b01 <coughs> i think you have to search and it's not coming why it is not coming because middle management has not been enabled at all so we are not enabled middle management is not coming fine go there let us not enable middle management so i will not right click then it go there to the place i now here i will not go to the assign business unit business function and then since i have not enabled it's not coming in the uh, inventory or creation actually and go there with the financials i will not paste it over here now ah is not this task you go there so it is what assign business unit business function where is it assign business unit business function so go there go to this place paste it over here enter now so i am not showing you the errors also so since we are not enable the middle management it is not coming in this place now it is not coming over there and it is not go there enable middle management middle management i am going to enable it so i am enabling the middle management so the moment you enable the middle management one more tick mark is now coming fine the below legal entity so which you are going to see on monday fine monday we will be seeing the cost accounting fine the purchasing accounting you are going to see both the receipt accounting and cost accounting will be seeing on monday so other time you go to use it now i am going to so the moment i enable the middle management one more uh, day, one more entry is coming fine give, give a seven close it now give a warning now big warning is coming fine click on okay and then accept it now that's it so middle management is now enabled now we go there and then query for it now we will be able to get so click on search now so now b01 if you go on and search it will be coming thank you your business unit bandichi it is now enabled for middle management and so we can very well create inventory or thank you okay now and then i will now put the what's called my zero the location in the app so remember every location has to be tidy on or that the must not find whether you want i will now click on next <clears throat> b01 must sort is now getting created one oh god what is it b01 you get the app now i have to choose the b01 lock one and then click on okay now you will now see the address zero is coming thank you so the legal entity will now go there and drop it now so us3 legal entity and then the profits of the business will be coming automatically and go there click on next now on the main area we completed it so we go there and then the master org is the same org now fine once you put the org the same org as this becomes a master org now fine go there schedule is what operations you can use it now. operation schedule you can use it now we are now seen completely about how to create everything and then operation schedule is the best schedule now. for a quick one you can do this operation schedule choose this one. and follow my videos on how to create a schedule now fine the big step actually i'm not doing anything now so that's it this completes what you are this thing and then uh, uh, this is okay this much is sufficient locator control treatment and sub unit level is the best level on it on it there is a recommended level and click on second close my mass org is now created so you know now go on then query of the organization name b01 and then give it app you know see that it is becoming the mass org is ready so let me go plus now let us now go on then create a child org on this now <clears throat> this is a b01 underscore child underscore one and then click on it so take a wait and here it's a capital b 011 010 is a mass or fine go there i'll not put b01 and give it a tap now okay very good fine go there no coming so location is b01 and then i will not put the child org location now fine so do not use one location to multiple org it will not work at all okay. so legal entity will be coming automatically and then the profit center business will be coming fine click on next now and then here if this org is going to be different than this it becomes a child now fine go there b01 i will not put the mass org over here so once when you put the mass org this becomes a child org if these two org are different they are child org if they are same they are the mass org and then item grouping behavior has been fully explained in the training i'm not uh, explaining it even oh, okay fine i'm going in the definition or i will not put the operation schedule operations the schedule i'm not putting in a final that one i will now give a seven close by which modem the my first child org is also created so we created one master and then one child on this one and then uh, sir locator control define me here okay it doesn't matter i will not make a change of that is the best practice now uh, remember we cannot make a change if you are not done it alone if you don't do it we have to do it now fine later on we cannot make a change now fine this is the best one and then if you are not changed it now we have dropped the organization just because we have not done it now in our uh, implementations we have made a mistake on this now so go there click on seven close who is this who has uh, put the error now fine amit this side okay amit okay now we will now go to this place where management is there now we will now go on and tie the location store now fine go to the manage locations then we will not tie the location store fine click on done click on done oh sorry <coughs> you have to come on So click on this and then go to the search and then we'll not tie the locations to org. Right? Once the orgs are created, manage locations. Go there. Click on manage locations. <clears throat> and then here I will now go and then query my locations B zero one and then enter now. <clears throat> and then zero the location I go and then edit. Right? Always go for an update now. That will be giving a keeping a record of this or whatever you made a change now. Go there. Click on it. I will now put my master org now. Right? The zero the location will be tied to the master now. 
go there go to the inventory of the b01 and then you can find the damn i'm showing you master of i will not choose the master of that's it it is not tied and then click on submit now so the location of tie is now completed and let's go submit we'll be done keep on also and then we go there and then open up the child i may be a bit fast but since you all know all these things i am not going fast now go there. so location and then go there click on edit and then click on update now and then click on okay go there and then in the inventory org i will i will not be the one then one i am going to put it now so child org i am putting it now so go there click on submit which is now complete so we are now completing both the master and tie org location tie ups any doubts till now click on submit so you know that you go there click on that so the tie of the organization location is now completed now create sub inventory we have to go on the sub inventory i will now create only one sub inventory for the master of time on the now i go i'm going to use only one org for this now so the remaining you can make it something like that so go to the manner sub inventory is located the task and then choose your org fine it's a b011 is the one i'm not going to create any sub inventory in the master org only on the child i'm going to create it fine click on sub plus and then i will now create for one sub one sub one So sub inventory one this is basically a raw material stores actually. I want to make it as a RMS one. RMS one raw material stores. Fine, go that you want it. And then take it over and then put in the description. And then here you type the location also. Fine, B zero one. So if you get the app. So all the tight locations as well as under there is only one thing which is the top one is coming. So B zero one lock one location is tight. So these things are all we are not going to test anything on this exercise. Fine, click on seven close now. <clears throat> That's it. By which we are now completed creation of one sub inventory for this exercise now. Fine. Now we will now go and then create our jobs. Now, fine. So let's quickly create a job. Fine. So let's create one job. So paste it over here. Manage jobs. Let me create a job. <clears throat> so go to the manage jobs. I know how to how to have one job. In like in real practice, you have to have three now because uh, we are going to set approvals. Now, fine. I am now going to demonstrate only one now. Go there. Click on it. So I will now say B zero one underscore junior manager. Take a copy of it and then put the code. The code is a unique identifier for every job. Fine. Leave it as such. Now, fine. I'm not creating only one job. You have to create three jobs for your hierarchical approval. So go there, make it as a full time, and then regular is what regular. <clears throat> the look level is a very important one for three of your uh, tests. Now there are six ways of work: the job level, the supervisor level, as well as position levels needs a level actually. I know that point doesn't go there. Go to space, and then uh, that nothing else is required on this. So I click on submit. So I have now completed one job creation. You will be creating three for your exercise for doing all the. Three methods of approval of job level, supervisor level, as well as position. That's it. I will not give it done now. My job is now created. I will now go to the manage positions. My take over it. I will now go to the manage positions. You have to create three three now. Come over. Click on positions now. Click on create. <clears throat> and then here, parent position is not required. You go and then populate your business position. Fine. Parent is required only for Acharya must not find that. Come over. I will now say it's a B zero one. Underscore junior manager mechanical. The code gets generated automatically, and so it's not required. No action is required. Thank you for next now. Go to the next one. Go to the next place. And then here you go there. The department. I had to create a department. I have forgotten the department. It is not there. Oh God. Job department only. I skip this step. I will not come out of it. Let me create the department and come over here. Department is a mandatory field for uh, the position, and so we are doing it. But we are not going to use the department at all in supply chain. Supply chain we don't use it now. I will not use departments. And then I will now quickly create the department. So click on plus now, and then give the name that is more than sufficient. There are plenty of setups are there. You will now learn in that CM training actually. Fine. I will now say med department. Department. So if you will now take copy from there. So here, if you it's a basically train now. If you click on next, the department details are coming up. Fine. So many things they used to do. I have seen in our implementation. I see team is doing plenty of things on the department actually. Fine. Plenty of things are there. Nothing is required from a supply chain. If you are using it only for supply chain, click on submit directly. That's it. More than sufficient. You don't have. So the department is now created. You go there, and then we will now take up what the next is positions. You can take all the positions. Remember, one department, three jobs, and three positions you have to create for your exercise. Fine, click on done now. Come on up it, and then go there, and then paste the positions over here. Manage positions is the one. And click on positions. <coughs> go there, click on create now. I'm not going to get the position. So parent is not required. So B zero one is the one thing you have now. <coughs> and then the name is what is the B zero one underscore junior manager mechanical. Take a copy of it. Click on next. Uh, code is automatically generated. Action is not required. So department is B zero one, and then give a tab to be coming. So the job is B zero one, and then give a tab to be coming. And then location is not required. Find the remaining job required. So nothing else is required. And then hiring status is what active, approved. Pro, uh, hiring status is approved. And then it is a single income, but is okay. None is also better. None non-single income are used by say, supply chain management. 
the remaining the pooled and shared are used by others now and then you are not going to have only one employee it's okay fine the full time equivalent is one the health count is also one that's more than sufficient fine. if you're going to have multiple one multiple employees you have to go for a none now fine. multiple employees are occupying this position you have to go for a none now for this training is okay fine it's okay and then click on next now fine this much is sufficient fine click on next now go there click on submit by which it is now complete <clears throat> That's it. You go there, and then you'll now go there. You'll now go to the users now. Fine. You are going to create a legal user and not the security console user. Fine. Go there. Click on manage services. Fine. Click on done. You know that. So we can even check whether our position is created or not at this place. Now, fine. Go there. B zero one. Then enter now. So have a look at it. Whether it is now come on. It is now come on. General manager can handle this. So make a check whether it is now there or not. So go there. You are now going to create a user. This is a legal user. The legal user will be having an association to LDB. You know. So a user which is having an LDB association can only be used in supply chain. Supply chain transactions can be done only by them. I will now make it as the EMP one. Fine. Uh, uh, go there. First name is what? Uh, B zero one underscore. I will now put my mail ID. Nana dot app sixty gmail dot com. Gmail dot com. Go there. Come on. I will now give the username. Go there. B zero one. Go there. EMP one. One of the guy has created a user in the security console, and then he has made a link account, but it is not working. I don't know how to make it work. Yeah, security console user, how we have linked it to a legal user and all is a high level topic. So if you know it, do it. Otherwise, do not experiment on this now. Fine. If you don't know it, if you don't know, please don't use the link account and all. Fine. If you know it, it's okay. Go there and then make it as an employee. So he'll be having an association to LDB. You find go there. It is a. It's called US one LDB three actually. US one LDB three. I don't know why US one is not coming there. Fine, I got only LE three. Fine, because I don't know. There is not getting listed at all. It's a B zero one. I'm going to give it up. So he is now associated to this LEBU. The job is what B zero one. I'm going to give it up now. That's it. Fine. Department is B zero one. This much is sufficient. Fine. The position do not come over here now. I have to give the manager also. So once when you create a next employee, we can make him as a manager also. That's it. So go there. Both things done now. Fine. बाकी ना और क्लास लग गया माना आपरा कूपर रहना है I'll call you okay so go there everything is now completed fine go there point and now give us same and close now so my user is created and then go there and then do it now so the user is now created we have to give a role now fine otherwise you give a role he will not be operable operable now and go there so user is now created so uh, even the Person management also we had to go on and give his position actually fine go that I will now go on and give his position also the person management fine go that come on it will now go to the my client groups and then give the position now the user fine go to the my client groups click on it I will now go to the manage person now where is the manage person come on it is not there I will now edit it fine manage person somebody has there no it is not the my client groups I will now enable it actually the my client groups <coughs> product management. It was above. This above, ah, okay. So go there. Here, here, left side. Left side, okay. So here, ah, uh, what's called person management has to come. Fine, it is not coming actually. So there's something is missing on this role actually. Fine, because of which you are not having the person management. Fine, go there. Click on that. We will now give a charmous role to our user actually. Go there. The one is not able to do it, and this is just to be able to do it. Fine, go there. So we will now assign the roles actually. Fine, go there. Click on it. We will now go to the go to the security console. <coughs> Then go to the tools and then go to the security console. And then there, we will now assign the roles for this user. Then go there. Go to the users now. Click on the users and then query for the user. B zero one, which is a legal user. It's a legal user now. B zero one, here is a legal user. He is having an association with LBU. So click on edit and then add the roles now. And click on add roles. So you give the IT security manager for this now. IT security manager, I am going to give it now. So IT security manager, Vora, I am now doing it. Select it and then click on add one machine. And then afterwards we go there. I will now give what application implementation console. Implementation implementation consultant. Implementation consultant. I am going to use this one. Application implementation. Ah. Implement T A O M consultant. I will now use the application implementation console. Now, Vora. So, highest role as far as the setups are concerned. I am going to connect. And then having given this, I now go there. I now put the employee role also. This is an abstract role which will be enabling for scheduled process and things. I now give add membership. And then afterwards, I will now put the human resource specialist also. Human resource specialist. 
And then for procurement, you add PRC all. PRC and then all. That is sufficient. And this is the, for all the procurement activities. This is one rule. I click on add. That's sufficient. So this much of a role will now help you doing everything. Fine. Close that. Click on save and close now. And then after having done this, you go there and then run the uh, your, uh, import user role. So click on that. You now go there. You will now run the import. Remember, you have to do it for three users now. Then only you can do the hierarchical approval on this one. <clears throat> three jobs, three positions, and three users you have to create. So click on setting new process. And then here, I will now say uh, import user role. This concern here. So that will be basically syncing all that. Uh, security control setups into the transaction systems actually. On the security console, you are done setup and you running. It's not having any parameters actually. So it will get it is a force syncing actually. So do the force syncing by which it will be running out. So I don't want to, because I'm not going to perform any transactions. I'm only going to do the setups and not go hard on this. So this role, this many roles we, we normally set up and then I show you everything. So PRC all is now equivalent to everything. And then for inventory manager, if you're using PRC manager, we had to have one more role fine for that. If you're using a PRC manager, so what you have to do is you have to have one more uh, role also. Uh, because the PRC manager is only for procurement and that's on it. And then you go there, go to the security console. So I'm not sure what's this place. Go to the security console now. So tools, security console. If you are using PRC is only for procurement activity, and then for inventory, you have to have this. Click on it. You go there, I'll now say B01. You go to this place. And then for the inventory activity, if I click on edit now, and then add these roles. First of all, product data steward, you add it for creation of item. Data steward for item creation, actually. And then you go there, click on it. And then choose it and then click on add roles. And then for inventory, you add inventory manager. Inventory manager. Inventory manager is sufficient. So these two roles you added for your inventory activities as well as your uh, what's called your, your item creation activities. If not done, click on save and close. So the concurrent is also running parallelly. I click on done now. Wait for the concurrent to complete, and then after go ahead. Now. now I'm not going to do this now. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. Fine. Manage task configuration for procurement. Manage subject accounting options. I'm not going to do it. Manage payment terms is a must. Fine. You must want to do it. I will not go there. And then I will not log in with our user now. Fine. So once when the legal user is created, you start to log in with this now. Oh God, I have not reset the password. I have not reset the password. I have to go and then reset the password now. So if the password is not reset, because the system creates a standard password there, you have to go on and reset it. Fine. Go to the tools and then go to the security console. Let me reset the password. I have not reset the password. Let me use that. So go to the users. B01 is the one. Enter it now. I can select and update the password. So click on reset passwords. So manually I'm doing it on the it. So it's welcome one, two, three. And give it app. Welcome one, two, three is the one. You click on reset. All are small now. So click on that. I will now log in with my legal user. Fine, click on that now. And I'll log in with my user. So go there, click on it. I'm not going to sign out and <coughs> come out of it. So confirm out. And then I'll now do this. The B01 underscore EMP1 is the one. And the, the welcome one to three is the password. And click on sign in. So once when you sign in, we'll be going in now. So after you sign in, you associate the positions and line managers also. So go there. In the in the mind client groups, if you go on and see, you will now have what's called the person management. Sorry. So there it was not coming. The person management is there. Assign your position and line managers for all the three employees. I, one is reporting to two, two is reporting to three. You go there, query your employee. The last name, comma, first name, no, comma, space, first name. Right. So last name, comma, space, first name. You make a search now to be coming at the bottom. And then associate the position as well as line. So open it up and click on the hyperlink of the employee, last name, comma, first name, and go there. Click on edit and then go to update now. So action is what something add assignments. Thanks on okay. It's a mandatory field. You have to do it now when you're updating it. So you can even take a report on this one. Go down. So go there. So the business unit is what? B01. And then give it tab now. It'll be coming. So the position is B01. So it will also show you there is only one position you have made now. So I'm now putting the position over here now. The job will be coming automatically. So the job comes up on the position now. And then in this place, you have to do what? The manager details. I don't have a manager. 
So once when you create it, you put your EMP1, EMP2 is the manager, line manager. And then for EMP2, EMP3 will be the line manager. That you have to. And then for our uh, accounting, we have to have the expense account also over there. Now. And, you have to run it. and then once when the expense account is created, you can come over here and then put the employee's expense account over here now for testing the accounting engine. Where is the expense account here? Managers here, the expense account. Employee's expense account will be somewhere there. Come on, it is not visible for me. Maybe uh, since uh, the position is now given, uh, it is not visible or not. I don't know exactly. The employee's expense account will be coming somewhere now. Line manager is coming. Oh, God. Not coming. It will be coming. Uh, if you again do it, or it will be coming. I'll not show it to you. Fine. Give a save. And then whenever you're correcting a record, you have to save and then submit also. Save is there. Afterwards, you have to submit. Otherwise, it will not take effort at all. Fine. Go there. So it has to go in this tree, actually. Fine. Go in the next now. So composition phase, you can leave it now. And then afterwards, roles. Fine. Go there. Fine. Is there anywhere else? It's coming. not coming. Fine. Click on next now. I'll go to the roles. Roles, I'm not going to assign. Already. It's already assigned now. So click on next and then you'll come to the review. And the review part, you have to submit. Then only you can now see this. So click on submit. By which it is now submitted. The changes will be submitted. The position as well as your expense accounts are required actually. Position along with the BU and then the job will be coming automatically over there now. I click on it. So this has to be done. So you have to do it for three employees, remember. For one, two is the uh, line manager, two, three is the line manager. And then for the three, at least give the position now. And three, you have to give only position. Mango that one. Now go on and query again on this now. Mango that. It's a EMP1, comma, B01 underscore. Now. I click on search now. We are querying on this now. You now see whether, oh God, how come two employees are coming? It's not showing me two. Come on, I didn't know why it's so. <sighs> what is the problem? Why is it not showing me? So if you go down, you can now see the, uh, what's called your expense. Yeah, expense information, fine. Only after you give the position, probably in the next line, you have to do it now, fine. So if you go on the edit it, the default expense account has to be given now, remember. After you give the position and then they give a submit, you come back and then the expense information is coming because with the, it may be uh, associated with the position, I think, probably. So this also you do it now. So I, since I don't have an account, expense account is not created for the training. You will be creating all the accounts and then have a look at it. So click on that now. Find expense account and then position for all the employees that is there. That is on this place now. My client groups on person management. So this I am not doing it. This I am not doing it. This I am not doing it. This, I'm not doing it. Manage payment terms. I am going to go straight away now. So these things I am now using by a legal user now. Find account. My this is my legal user. I know that you want to set up and maintenance. And then go there. On the payment terms, you add your RDS now. Otherwise, it will not work at all. So add your RDS. Check on it. Go there. So click on search and then paste your payment terms over here. Now. Okay, now. Manage payment terms. And then click on it. <clears throat> and then I will now choose the two bit in the 30. And then I click on edit. Now find one of them. You can or you can even create it and go that to the set assignments. I will now give a plus now and I'm going to add it. So drop it down. I will now put my B01. Come on, where is the B01 here? And then it is not US, it is US1 BU set, remember. It is not BU1, it is a US1 BU set which you are using it now. And US1, you know, see the bottom is there now. So use one view set is there. So this is the view set which you're using it. So that set has been added now. Your record with the combinations already existing. So no problem at all. So no need to add at all. Fine. So all the payment terms are added with this. And so no need to add and give a cancel. So if you see all these payment terms will be coming on your place now. Fine. Otherwise, if you're creating your own, it'll not be coming. Since I use use one view set on the business unit, no need to add the reference data set. Fine. Click on that now. Fine. That's it. So carrier, I'm not doing it. This I'm not doing it. This I'm not doing it. So procurement document numbering, I'm not using it. Line type, I'm not using it. Line sales, I'm not doing it. Life sales, manage life cycle phases is a must. Not, otherwise, you'll not be able to create an item. Actually, fine. Because that manage life cycle phases is a must. Otherwise, item creation is not possible. Now, fine. Now, now, now go ahead and do it now. And right click. Okay. Manage life cycle phases. Now, that. Now, search now. So we are going to create manage life cycle phases. Right now. <clears throat> so manage life cycle phases. Let me create one life cycle phase for this now. And click on plus. <sighs> So B01, uh, I'll say production. So production. I'm not explaining anything because everything has been explained in your training now. I'm not making it as a production. So click on save and close. That's not completed. No. Sequence number is well with 10 or 12, something like that. I'm giving it on click on save and close. The manage life cycle phases, I'm doing it now. That is not done. And then afterwards, you go there. So manage uh, item status, I'm not doing it. So I will now go on. Then this is required only for payables, actually. Fine. It is not required for procurement. So in EBIS, the financial options is required for both payables and procurement. If you don't do the financial options, you cannot do it. Here, it has been delinked actually. It is only when you do a P2P push, it will be required. So at the time you go on and do it now, finally, now it's a, you are going to do a P2P push also in your training. So go directly on it, will not do this also. Manage common options for this now. And when you're doing a P2P push, you need it now actually. So go there and do it. Now. So <clears throat> go there. It's a B01, is a one. And then all accounts I'm going to put as a liability account. 
10 iPhone, 100 iPhone. So 1001 is my liability account. And since I have not created other accounts, I have no populating this account everywhere now. So all the mandatory fields, I'm now populating with the liability account. So discounts taken, I'm putting it up. In reality, you'll have to create everything and then uh, do it. So this much is only mandatory. If you go down, the built location will be populating on the purchase order. I will not put the first location over here now, B01. I will not pop the first location over here now. And that will be defaulting out of the purchase orders. Purchase the purchase order must find the other one. So you know that the shipped location has been shifted to procurement. So it is no more there in the, in the common options, actually. Fine, go that you want it. So this much is sufficient to give a save now. So by which the common options for payables and procurement is not completed now. <clears throat> Remember to use US1 BU set. Right? That will be very easy for you. Configure requisitioning business function, procurement business function. I will not postpone it slightly now. I will not go to the manager item class because I will not show you the error actually. If you don't do it, I will not see what are the error which is coming up. I will not show you. We go to the manager item class and go that you want it. I will not go to this place. Paste it over here now. Enter now. So, uh, sorry, I am taking a copy of this. So, manager item classes, I am not taking a copy. So, go there. Paste it over here. Enter now. <clears throat> so, go to the manager item class. And then in this place, you choose the root item class and then click on edit now. And then here, you have to go and then create only a template now. Right? The two things we have to create now. And then we will now add our, uh, uh, what's called your uh, uh, life cycle over here now. And then of course, you go to the life cycle pages and then it add it. Otherwise, if you don't add it, it will not come at all in your template actually. And go, there, go to the actions and then go to self net. So let me add the template over here now. Go there, with the B01, the production template, I'm going to add it now. Otherwise, it will not appear on your templates. No, fine, it's not a, fine, the 12th number is not, is not added. Fine. I'll now go to the, give us save now and go to the templates. Now, right? You will now create a template. So we'll now go on and create a template and go there. So in the template, go on and query yours now. Fine, go to the query and then query for your org. There will be already one organization you'll be having. Fine, B010, and the master, the system would have created one template now. And then along with the purchasing, fine, PUR. Fine. Both the things you put and then make a query. The system has already created, fine, select it and then we're going to edit. Now. So the system has already created a B01 purchase item template. Now, fine, go there. Item status is you make a change to what active. And then life cycle phase, whatever you're given now, fine, that you get. Fine, go there. B01 production is there. Leave these two things blank and then directly go to the specifications. And then the specification we are concentrating only on the purchasing. I'm not going to give a list price now that will be coming on the purchase order. Purchasing. The remaining are all explained. So for a quick setup, it's not required for me to explain anything. Fine, go that you want to now. No done. So this much is sufficient. Fine, go that you want it. And then give a save now. At this stage, we are saving it now. And then I'm going to make it as a default now. So once when you're given the list price on this now, that is more than sufficient for this training, the life cycle phase and the list price, select it and then click on edit now. I'm going to make a change of this particular date. I'm going to select edit. I will not call this as a B01 purchase data. Fine, go there. I will not set it as a default. So that will be coming automatically when I'm creating an item. So that's it. The name is changed. Fine, save and close. Activity on the item class is complete now. I'm not explaining anything. Since you know all these things, I'm not doing anything at all. Now I'm not going until only one item I'm going to create it now. Fine, that's right. So go click on that. You'll now create one item for this exercise now. Fine, go, go to the home page and then go to the product management and then product information management from there. We'll be doing it now. Fine, right. And then hide all these things. Fine. So many things are there. Fine. Whatever is not there, whatever is not when you go there. You go to the customized springboard and then disume, disume, disume. Fine. Whatever is not required, you remove it. Fine. There are plenty of things are there. <coughs> My enterprise and all that tools is required. Tools schedule process will not be there. So enable the schedule process. That is very important for us now. The remaining are not required. Dishum, dishum, dishum. Remove it. So that uh, security console is required. General accounting is not required. Awards is not required. Me is not required. Service is not required for attaining. Keep it minimal so that you'll be able to do things very fast. Actually, fixed assets is not there. Configuration is not required. So many I remove. I don't know see whether it has come down or not. <coughs> okay, it is now manageable actually. So we go there, go to the next level. So we'll now go on and go to the product management and then go to the product information management and then create our item, first item. I'm not going to get only an item. We have created plenty of items. And then uh, that you have to do as per the normal time. Click on create it now. So let me create it. So we are now bringing up our structure fast. That is our aim now, fine, B01. The zeroth organization will be coming. The master, fine, go there, click on it. So item class is coming, click on okay. So he's now giving a warning. Somebody is now fiddling around on the EFF on the item, actually. It doesn't matter if I click on this one. So when a warning message comes in, somebody is fiddling on the EFF on the item. So leave it now. So it's not, it's a B01 underscore. <clears throat> what happens? I will also item one now. So sometimes this itself will not be able to create because of what happens the governance and other things. I will not tell you that also. So go there, go to this place. And then have everything is now. Go to the association and let me associate with the child or The unit submission is coming. Oh, come on. Where is my, my template has to come now, fine. Okay. 
in my template i have forgotten to give this no fine there is a mistake fine there is the primary unit some error will be coming let us now go there and then correct my mistake no fine so i have not given that actually i will go to the manage item class and then let me correct that mistake i made a mistake there now so you go there i will now go to the oh, it's called click on the name icon and then go to the setup and maintenance i made a mistake let me correct it now <clears throat> go there go to the manage item class task any doubts anybody has got please tell me manage item class not one now so i made one mistake on this now select it and then click on edit now i go to the what's <clears throat> called your templates and then let me query my template now so my template is starting on b01 and then query to be coming now so there one thank you for so here i have not given this what's called the primary units of matters so that is the reason that i am not coming this area i have now forgotten now i will now make it as each now uh, each i am not making it so here i am not making it as a primary and then this is the pricing as a primary and then conversion is both and these are all fully explained on my inventory link and that so it's not that so this part i have forgotten i gone to the specifications directly after life cycle after life cycle phase i gone to the specifications and i given only the list price actually and that in the purchasing agreement so in the main area also i had to give it then then it will be defaulting and the list price is 2 dollars now fine so in the overview page i have forgotten to do, give these things now so these things are given and give a seven close now we go on and create our item match so click on the now now go on and create so don't make any mistakes while doing it now so that it will be coming fast actually and uh, one more thing is you go there <coughs> and then click on setup and you will not be able to create items at, sometimes because uh, the pim is uh, basically enabled so you go there go to the actions and then go to the what's called it. go to the offerings and then ensure if you are having a problem on doing it so pim is causing a problem you go to the product management and then you go to the opt in features on this now go to the offerings and then go to the product management and go to the opt in features disable uh, governance and consolidation when governance and consolidation if you disable it it will be allowing it open data governance is disabled actually and then data consolidation these two tick marks should not be there they must be on only for your pim now only for the product information management pure inventory will not be having these two tick marks fine then only it will work so governance and consolidation ensure that it is off now so that you will be able to create item fully <coughs> i gone by actions and then go to offerings so click on the home icon and then i go there and then i am going to get it so click on it i will now go and then create our item i go to the product management and then go to the product information management <coughs> let me create an item now click on it go there and then go to the create item i am now creating the item <coughs> so organization b01 b0101 one will come one will not come at all remember only the master org will be coming over there so everything is now there fact come okay now now this is okay this warning is for the efo warning actually fine go that one and then i will now populate the item item is what is the b01 underscore item one now item one and then it is a first item item human now go there and then give it and then go to the association now you can see the primary units and everything has got populated then go to the associations and then here let me associate to the child or go to the actions and then go to select nat so let me add the child or over here so b01 the one enter now i'm not adding it <clears throat> so the child or i'm adding it thank you call apply and then click on done it's all done now so my item is ready and then go there save and close now this step is now complete now if you go to this place you know how it so this one so manage mapping set in fs on now fine so this i will not do it a bit later now fine i will not show you the error and then afterwards do it now so i will now go to the manage requisition now directly and go there so go that click on it will now go to the requisition form and go that click on it will now go and get a requisition and go to the procurement and click on the procurement purchase requisition it will not throw an error that you don't have any be at all the be is not there <clears throat> fine you don't have an association to be at all because i am now associated to b01 business unit and then that be is not eligible for procurement actually fine it will not throw an error actually i don't know why it's not throwing an error because the requisitioning functionality is not enabled now fine right click on the duplicate now i will not show you i have not enabled the requisition functionality so it should throw an error ideally i don't know why it's not so and the account i will now go to this place and go to the setup and main ones now <clears throat> so assign business unit business function is the function of and go that assign percentage busi percentage busi percentage you know so it has to throw an error i don't know when it's not fine fine go select it and now over in the go that connect self nat and click on apply and go to ask let me let me choose my bu now like b01 i'm choosing it and click on search now it may be throwing an error later on so select it and then or i'm going to save and close and then edit requisitioning and receiving has not been done fine with that the task business unit scope selection with the business unit object returning <coughs> uh, what is it <coughs> so i will now say b01 and then click on search now select it and then click on save and close now it comes over here fine with that so here if you see 
I have not enabled the requisitioning, receiving, and procurement. All the three functionalities have been not been enabled. So, I, in my opinion, it has to throw an error. Now, you see. So, the first activity is what you go there, you click on it, and then it will not put the preferences. Now, no, it's not coming at this directly. So, here, if you drop down, you are not getting only US one business unit. Your business unit is not coming at all. <clears throat> so, because we are not enabled it for our business unit now. So, go there, and then we will not assign the requisitioning. <coughs> requisitioning, I'm assigning it. <coughs> So my BU has to come. So click on save and close. <coughs> you know, giving a warning sign for that. <coughs> <Do not enable. coughs> if you give a done now, <coughs> if you go there. So now if you drop down, you have to come out. You log out and log in. <coughs> it's not coming means what? You log out and log in and then see now. Sign out and sign in. So whenever such a thing happens now, you sign out and sign in. So click on sign in now. So you have to get it now. And I have now enabled the requisitioning business functionality. And also receiving also has to be parallelly enabled because both are client functionality. Thank you, Monet. Now go to the purchase requisitions now. So go to the purchase requisition now. So once when you go it, your business unit is coming. You go to the more task, you go there. Update requisition preferences is the first activity. You go to the more task and then click on update requisition preferences. That's the first activity. Go there. So I will now put my child location over here now. We have explained a lot on this now. And delivered location is not coming. Come on. EMD1 is there, EMD01, the delivery location has to come up. Oh, it's not coming. So go there. To the inventory actually, fine, that is coming, but the location is not coming. Fine, once only you put the location, only what I'm be coming on. What are the steps which is missing? Come on, anybody? I'm not missing some steps actually. So because of it, my location is not coming on. So the location is already tied to the R, no? It's already tied to the R, it has to come on. Some mistake somewhere now. <clears throat> the sub inventory, if you drop down, so here, everything is coming from the store sub inventory actually, and not my sub inventory at all. Fine, there's no location taking location as Seattle actually. By default, it is not taking Seattle as a location now. I have canceled now. So, okay, I will not do one thing. I will not enable the other function. This is going to do that. Assign business function. Let me assign everything. Fine. So I want to show an error and then show it to you, but it is not exactly working now for me. So click on okay, right, and then everything come on there. So let me enable those things. <clears throat> What is place? So I will now go to the place financials, assign, assign business, the USA percentage, the USA percentage, assign business in a business function. Let me enable all the functionalities of procurement. So I will now enable the procurement as well as receiving. And they are very important actually. Otherwise, what happens? Your locations won't be coming from that. You can't even close now. So it's not done now. Okay, okay now. And then go out, log out, and log in now. Right? Whenever any major changes are made now. So the client and service provider functionality for the business unit is now on now. So you have to get your preferences with your name actually. And go there. So go to the procurement and then go to the purchase requisitions now. <clears throat> and then go to the more task and then update requisition preferences. You go there. And then I will not put my B01. I have to get it now. Ah, the delivered location is not coming. Employee is already tied to the location, isn't it? Fine. We already have it. You now see what are the locations. We'll see for the location which are coming in now. So we'll now go to the advanced and then make a search for it. So I now make it as what? It's not blank. It's not blank. It's not blank. Some setups I might have missed it fine. So that may be causing a problem actually. I know jumping, 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 and then doing it now. There's no coming. It's Name and country no no is blank. It's not blank. Not blank and then make a search now. Oh nothing is coming here now. Country so, also. So click on search now. Shows you all your visions locations actually. How come my location is not shown here now? B01 is not shown here now. Everybody's location is also coming. Right? Even I created for the cell service procurement, the Bombay residents and Madras residents also I've not shown you. So they're also coming. But my location is not coming. What is the mistake? <clears throat> uh, Nana, uh, I think, uh, do you have to attach the location like to an inventory org or something like that? Sorry, I'm just guessing. I'm just guessing. I have done it. You know, see, you go to the man's location side now. I'll touch the yeah. contact. Actually. I've already done it. <clears throat> you know, make a check of it. Okay. So go there. You go to this place and then you go to the location. You can search. Manage location. Go on. Manage. So manage location. Go on. And then query may be 01. And then see the association to the B01. And then click on search. So log zero is there and then select and then click on edit update now. Edit correct now. 
we can also see that log zero is not associated with my mass drop. It is not already mass drop is also related to here. So it is on a common set only, and you will cancel. <coughs> Click on yes. Give a done now. Come out of it. Click on edit now. My location is not eligible for the inventory activity. Why my location is not eligible? Ah, I got it. I got it. I have not configured my requisitioning business contact because of which it is not done. Got it, got it. So once when you configure the requisitioning business function, then it will be coming. Good, good, good. I, I identified it now. So my requisitioning business function is not configured because of it. What happens? You go there. You are getting this error actually. Please mute your mics now. I don't need so I not configured it because of it. I got it. <coughs> so go there. So go this place. If you go there, go to the more task and then go to the update requisition process. Your location is not configured at all because of it is not coming. Fine, not coming. Fine, go there. Let us now configure that. Fine. That step is missing. So I don't know which step is missing. Means when you're getting it. Configure requisition business function is not there. Configure requisition business function is not there. So go there and then do it. <coughs> I know that. So go to the setup and maintenance. I purposely done it. I thought that I, the error will be showing somewhere else, but here it is now populating on the side. You go and then configure a repositioning business function. So click on it. In reality, you try to do more, but this itself is sufficient. Whatever I do, you can be will be up and running very fast actually. My B01 business unit might keep on okay. So here I am going to put the location. Default delivered location I'm going to put. So that will be defaulting on your purchase reposition section. So B01 underscore uh, What's called your child or you know, I'm going to put the child now. The organizations is not organization locations already tied and go that on it. So the remaining things are not required. And the, the, the default procurement view is also coming and go that one and then give a save and close. So the configure procurement business function is basically required for creating a requisition after the time save and close. And the changes are saying you now. Don't go there and then have a look at it. Click on it. So click on okay. And now go and then have a look at it. On. Now go to the place and then have a look at it. So go to the procurement and then go to the purchase requisition. This time it has to come. B01. A hey, come on. Gene boom ba. Go to the update requisition preferences and then put this B01. Go there. So till also it's not coming. Come on, I will now log out and log in. And sometimes whenever any major changes are done, you know, sign out and sign in now. So confirm. <clears throat> and then click on sign in now. So major changes need to be followed by uh, sign out and sign in now. You go to the procurement and then go to the purchase requisitions. You go to the more task and then go to the update requisition preferences. Go there, B01. <clears throat> you have to get it. Oh, God, it's still not coming. Go there, edit location. B01. Click on search. This much is sufficient for you to do this now. <clears throat> so, what is missing on this now? So let me configure the procurement uh, business function also. I'm, I'm not sure about what is causing the problem. My location is not coming here now. So I will now go to this place. And then if I have made a mistake on the what's called the inventory or creation, that will be a problem actually. What is the search? <coughs> configure procurement business function. The one go there. We check on it. Some mistake somewhere I have done. This is not required for a requisition creation now. So click on OK now. <clears throat> payment terms, uh, two button will be coming. All the payment terms will be coming actually because they are all on B1 set actually. Shipping method, I dropped down and I choose something now. Uh, I will not choose anything. Okay. <sighs> uh, flight terms, I'm not choosing it. Uh, let me put the standard DHL. This should not cause a problem for me later. Flight terms, you go there. I will not say cash on delivery or buyer pays right. It will be, you know, go there, you know, make it the destination. <clears throat> and then uh, it's okay. Buyer, I'm going to put it up. I'm not waiting as a buyer actually. Buyer is required only for the purchase order actually. Buyer is required. I'm going to go there. I will not populate my organization. The master order will be populated. You know, nine type is goods. <clears throat> nine type is goods. Currency is USD. Information is corporate preferred language is American English. Go there and then choose your American English. Where is that? Yeah, so there, American English. So 
American English or not. Yeah. So this is okay, zero, zero, zero. We have all seen those things. Not like that. So we're not as there. This is required for a PRTP automation, the touchless buying actually. It's called touchless buying. Oh, yeah. So this much is sufficient not like that. And then uh, he need not be a procurement agent. And so that should not be a problem. Sometimes what happens, he had to run this concurrent. Not like that. We had to run the concurrent. So let us not run the concurrent because sometimes the setups do not sync to the transactional systems actually. So let us not run the concurrent. The import user role. Sometimes that will be causing a problem actually. So go there. And then for sync it actually. Import percentage. User percentage. Whole percentage. So import user role. Search. Import user role. Import user role. Import user role, I'm not running it now. So go there, click on it. Click on OK. Full sync it actually. So it has to come. <clears throat> Sometimes they nakara karta hai because they make some small mistake here now. It makes, give a tab now. Click on OK. And then survey. Now wait for some time and then again log out and log in and then see when because this concurrent will now sync all your setups into the transaction systems for syncing it actually. So we are not for syncing it. So let us now wait for some time and then again start now passing the record. And I am running the retrieve LDAP concurrent also. Okay, now, okay, now. Retrieve LDAP so these two concurrents are basically uh, will now uh, do the for syncing of your setups into the transaction systems. So wait for these two concurrents to complete, and then afterwards we'll again go there and then see whether the location is coming or not. I have identified the issue actually. I have identified the issue. The issue is what? Go to the more task and then go to the update requisition preferences. And then there, the BU was US1 business unit. Because of it, it was not coming actually. If you go there, you put it, it was not coming. So I have to change it to mine now actually. So it's not coming. So go there and then let us not change it. How come this is also coming? I don't know because uh, because the LE is coming or not, I don't know. Fine. What is causing this BU? US1 business unit to come over there, I don't know. I think, uh, Nana, you use the data set, right? Reference data set. Oh, yeah, the data set I use. Okay. The US1 yeah. BU set I used because of which is coming, I don't know. Idea. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, okay. so the data set may be coming. Make it to the inventory, and then here you'll now find the sub one coming up over here. RMS1 is now coming. So it is now safe, like that, or safe and closing. So the preferences are now fully set now. An application error occurred. Oh God, what is the problem? An application error occurred. You won't say that. You won't say that. It's still not accepting it actually. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to go to the task and I'll update requisition preferences. And then the B01, the delivery location is B01. <clears throat> Lock one. And then let us now save and close. Later on, I will now make it to the inventory. Thank you, save and close now. So it has accepted it. Then I go there. I will now make a change to that. What go there? Update reposition purposes. I will now make a change to inventory, and then put the RMS one over here now. RMS one, and then click on save and close. It has accepted it. Like that. So I did it in two steps. Not like that. Now let us go there and create a reposition. Not like that. Click on enter reposition lines. We are going to get a reposition line. Okay. So we are now going to get a reposition line now. So I click on it. So let us now create a reposition line. It is for our business unit now. So my item has to come now. My item has to go. So go there in this place. My item has to come now. So whatever. I will not come with that. So I will not put my item on B01. If I put it, my item has to come now. And then click on add to cart. And go there. So we need charge account, accrual account, and variance account. For the requisition, charge and variance are more than sufficient now. Otherwise, it will not be giving a, it will be giving a problem now. So I'm not putting it. And then I will not add to cart. And then how about it? So item is populated. So the charge and variance account has to be set now. Fine. Right click on the duplicate. In the meantime, you now go and then set up the charge and variance accounts also. So go there. You now populate it and click on add to cart. You're now getting added to cart. So let's go and then review and then try to submit it. It'll not throw an error now. So go to this place. In this place, you know, you go there. Go to the manage mapping set of cost management and click on set up and maintenance. <coughs> so here I go there. It's now still getting added. Now. Now go there, click on it, and then go to the setup and maintenance, and then we'll now add it to the point. Click on search. <coughs> we'll now go to what? Uh, not the object. I'll go AI for something because of the scope specific task now. So go there. I will now keep my cursor on the manufacturing and supply chain management. 
So keep it on the setup on the manufacturing and supply chain management. And then here you go to the management mapping setup. Management percentage, map percentage, set percentage, and then enter number. So manage map percentage, manage map set percentage. So manage mapping setup is the one of cost accounting. Go to the manage mapping setup of cost accounting. I have now go and then set up the scope. And then there's a cost management, the scope now for the setup plan. So choose the cost management. There are multiple SLAs are there, out of which we are now working upon this only. We'll be working on more on Monday actually. I will now go to this place and then I will now choose the cost management of this one. And I click on save and close. So the cost management map mapping set is now coming up on the point. So you go there. So in this place, if you go there and then see so I had the cost fine, undergo and then underline and then click on it. So click on review now. You'll be having two errors actually. When I want to validate, you'll be getting two errors now. Fine. One is a charge account is missing, and then one is a variance account is missing. Kind of that point. So if you go there and then click on the manage approvals, it will now say charge account is missing. So it will now correct the problem of charge account, and then afterwards we will now correct the problem of variance account also. So you know coming over now, it will now throw an error that the charge account is missing. So once when it is done, you go there, click on it, it will now query on the material charge account. Kind of click on it. I'll now go on and query for the material charge account. So material, I have no query for it. So material charge account is coming. Make it big. So we have seen all these combinations actually. I will now give only on the organization. Supplementary is already seen that you can do it later on. The organization level and building. So if you go to this place, what happens? You can say charge account is required. So then no. So we will now specify the charge account also. And click on it. And now go there. So click on plus and then I will now populate my chart of accounts now. So go there. So drop down. I will now populate my chart of accounts. B01 COA. Where is this? It's telling me stop, stop, stop. No, stop. Hi, is there? Last third. Yeah, there. Can go there. So at this stage, I will not give a save now. I give a save, and then I will now populate the asset account again. And we have seen multiple ways of populating different different accounts now. Can go there. So the inventory org is what B zero one one, and then go there. Ten iPhone, hundred iPhone, thousand. So only one I am doing it. So the remaining has already been tested. That you, that you have to test now actually. So click on save. So it will not save. And then we will again come back and then make a check whether it is not uh, gone there or not. Fine. Save and close now. Fine. Here itself it will not show you. So if you again click on the manage approvals, it will not say variance account is missing. Now. now charge account has been given. Now see variance account is missing. Previously charge account came in. So let us now give the variance account also. Thank you for that. Let us now go there and then give the variance account. Also. It is the invoice price variance I am going to give it. Go there. It is the invoice price variance. So go there. Invoice price variance organization I am going to give it now. Fine. So this is a liability account. Remember. So variance is a liability account. No, it is an expense account. It is not a liability account. The variance is an expense account actually. Mm -hmm. So no go there. Click on again. Talk to the financials. They will tell you all the accounts. What it has to be done. So go there. B zero one C Y A. And then here in the bottom, I am not going to give an expense account. Click on it. So one thousand is an asset. One thousand one is a liability. And then one thousand two is an expense. B zero one one. Go there. So ten I can. Another I can. One thousand two. I am going to give it. To so it's not given. So we'll now give a save and close on this now. So this is for my B zero one C Y A. I am going to go up. And then I click on save and close. Now you will be able to go for the approval. So I come shop the positions and that's when I the approval. Now no error will be coming. It will not show you who has to approve. I still not coming. I given it now. Go there. I will not query it now. Click on query. Sometimes you have to log out and log in. So you go to the query. I will have a look at it. So B zero one. I am entering now. So once you query, you keep your cursor already there. So it's all there. So click on save and close. And cancel. Fine. And not made any modification. Cancel it. So let me go on and make a new one now. Fine. I'll now go to the shop and then let me create a, the requisition number one is coming. Let me go on and create a requisition number two now. And go to the enter requisition lines and then let me create a. You know, so it's a B zero one. And then go there. And item one. I'll now go for two quantities now. <coughs> one quantity. Click on add to cart. So the first line. Let me delete it now. Fine. Let me delete it. Cheapo. Say. <coughs> So the first line I'm deleting. Really I will now add to the card the new item with the two quantities now. Thank you, Monet. So I have to solve the first of all the accounting problem now, and then afterwards we can go ahead on this. Now. So the manager approves as to say everything. Fine, go ahead. Come on, add to card now. Add to card. It's not done. So it's not done. Go on and query. So click on review now. So here you go to the manager approvals. You will now see it should not throw any error at all. It has to show me who are all the approvers actually. Till now, it has not thrown any error. Means what? It is okay as far as accounting is concerned. Okay, display tree only. Fine. This is a different error actually. This error is because what happens? The approval has not been properly set. So we don't have any accounting error actually. 
no accounting around this fine work part so let us now go on and set up this also fine work part we will now set up a, a simple approval over there so that what am i will be doing now so we we'll now go to this place and then click on search now find manage rec approvals manage procedure rec approvals for the approvals so we now set up a simple approval on this one over there is manage requisition approvals and then go there so here it is already enabled parallel somebody has enabled let me disable it we need to build and then i will now go to the serial and then i will now make an automatic approval of serial and click on edit rules and then i am going to make an automatic approval you see oh so many rules are there I don't want it here i don't like it so i know use the other one and the header pre approved stage one serial is there and now go on and edit rules you see how many are there oh, only two are there so there is one rule apply always applies there automatic is there fine this we have got one only one now and so much created it so we will now use that now fine there so it will no uh, there is no need to deploy it all because we already deployed now from there i will not enable it. so this is have been done by so now now we go there you go to the shop purchase requisition and click on manage approvals now you know, see whether it shows the automatic approval the application developer has to show me right? it's not coming so application developer is coming so afterwards you can test all the six methods of approval that is automatic approval a single approver worker can approve then afterwards approval group then the job level approvals then the supervisor level approvals and then your position level approvals all of them can be done right. clear so all the six methods of approval you can test now fine it is now fully set now i am not submitting it now we will now go to the purchase orders now fine we will now go on and have a look at the purchase orders we will now go on and look at the purchase orders so go to the procurement and then i go to the purchase orders and go to the purchase orders <clears throat> and this person is not a buyer for any of the bus actually since this buy this guy is not a buyer for any of the bus it will not show you nothing <clears throat> if you go there, click on it. I will now go on and create an order. I click on create order. So here he is not a buyer actually. So you know, say nothing is coming. Oda ponga. You know, say so you have to make him as a order as a buyer for this particular one. Fine, exactly on it. You can even make him a buyer as a multiple orders actually. Fine, exactly on it. So let us now make him as a buyer. Actually. He goes place. Go to the setup and maintenance. <clears throat> and then we are going to make him as a buyer. Actually. So click on it. And then go to the task. Click on search. <clears throat> it's a manage procurement agent. Entering now, so manage procurement agent is the one. So we are going to enter and go there. Click on plus now. I will now make him as a buyer for two of the ones now, just for understanding over this. The reality is not a good thing. Go there, come on. I will now make it for one of my bureau. B zero one. Come on, where is the bureau? So many. The last. Time. The last. Huh? Last three four. Below that Z one. Ah. Yeah. B zero one. And then the agent name is what EMP one comma B zero one underscore space last name comma first name fine go that one and then the default procurement view is coming fine go that I will now give you access to all now fine everybody other 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 purchase officers the document also can access now fine go that so he can be a uh, what's called a, a one as a purchase procurement agent for other views also normally what happens there one guy will be basically monitoring for multiple views fine give us save give us save now and then afterwards go that we go there. I will now give a save and close now, and then again make it. I will now make it for US one business unit also. So click on it and then drop it out. I will now make it for US one business unit also. So you can even make a purchase officer for him as a multiple things also. So US one business unit also make it. Agent is what EMP one comma space B zero one underscore one. Right? Last name comma space first name like this. Okay, go there. Here it is a US one business unit. So he can be a buyer for multiple BUs also. He can very well do it. So when you are creating a purchase order, you have to choose the appropriate BU and then go hard and then do it. It is equivalent to multi-org access control of EVs now. So I click on that. Save and close. Now if you go there, he will be having access to this BUs now. Maybe. So click on it. You now go to the space and then you go to the procurement and then go to the purchase orders. And then here you go there. Click on it. You now go on then create an order now. Click on create order. <coughs> so once when you go on the create order, so the BUs both the BUs are coming in. Wherever you know, use the BU. And then its repositioning view will be coming. So we had to create a supplier. Supplier is not there because of which is not coming. So you know supplier creation. And so what happens? I will now go there. Go to the US one business unit. Uh, Any of what happens? We had to create a supplier because I have to show you the account also. Fine with that. So let me go on and create a supplier actually. Fine with that. Go to them now. Well, let me get a supplier. I have to show the purchasing accounting as far as accrual is concerned. Now you go to the procurement and then I go and create a supplier actually. So click on it. So go to the what? Create supplier. We will now create one supplier actually. And go there. It's a B zero one underscore sub underscore one, and then the business unit is spent authorized. 
and tax organizations the mandatory one for that make it the remaining are not mandatory and click on create now when you are manually creating it i think is mandatory if you are going by a spend authorized and then the, the prospective suppliers there are so many things which are mandatory so the, the runs number also is mandatory there so once you have already seen it those things you are going to experiment on your uh, practices basically now we are considering only on a bare minimum structure fine so we are not doing all those things so go there click on another go to the payment terms and then make one of them as a uh, default one select it and then click on any button put a tick mark on this one and then give a save and then go to the address and then it does not create an address click on this click on plus one so it does not create an address now so address i am creating it actually so address name is what b01 underscore address underscore one no? so country is united states this is the country okay so line one is what b01 one and then the postal code one zero zero two zero you can give it which is one of them okay, okay. it's all done now and ordering and remit to i'm enabling it now you okay, can even close by which that is not created we'll now go to the what's called the contacts and then create a contact and then associate the contact to with this address actually okay, we'll go to the contacts now so go to the contacts and i'm going to associate something from this so we are now seeing a quick way of creating a structure and then start your work actually on this one I will say this Anta one, and then Nana one. I will give my email. I am going to give it now. I am now using my other email. I find n for Nana email dot com. Given you Nana dot app six. That is my primary email. And then afterwards you go there. And then you click on actions and then go to select nag. You select it that. Click on apply and then click. So we can even create a user account for which it will be created. Fine, click on it. So the system will be automatically adding some seeded responsibility or seeded roles actually. So these many roles are there. We'll be seeing it during supply portal actually. <coughs> can add it. So a message will also be sent to him. So click on seven close by which the address residing in the contact is now created along with the supply portal username. So email itself will be the username actually. And we had to reset the user a password otherwise it will not be coming as a phone. But for him the password will be set by the system actually. For this guy, supply guy, you can make another one. We'll now go to the address. Is not done. Then I'll go to the site and the telephone site. So we go there and click on plus. So let us now create a site for him now. Drop down which procurement unit I'm now going to choose B01 now. Address is what B01. And then give it a tab. You can make another. The address gets copied into site. I will now make a change to site now. Is the so site one? I'm making a change now. I'm going to one. And then give a save. The remaining will be on now. Click on save. So we have already seen everything on the purchasing area. The ERS, everything has been seen over now. Right? So afterwards, you have to experiment all this. <coughs> you go to the invoicing. It is US dollar. <coughs> Payment currency is also US dollar. <coughs> go there, and then site assignment is very important. Otherwise, it will not work at all. Fine, go there. Click on it. Don't use the automatic. And it will be giving you a lot of things. It will be automatically assigned. And go there, and then put only US. Now. Don't use the automatic. You're putting everything over there now. Ship location is what? What else? You go there. B zero one. This will be defaulting onto the purchase orders actually. Ship two and build two will be defaulting over there. If it is not there, it will be picking up from the configure procurement business function as well as the common options. Common options has got a build location, and then the procurement business function is having a ship location. If these two are absent, the supplier will be picking up. Okay. Liability we already seen now. So if required, you can put it. Otherwise, what happens? The liability I will not put it now. When you are doing a P two P push, it will be causing a problem actually. So liability distribution, I am putting it up. Fine, we are seven close by which the site creation is now completed. Now. The site creation is completed. Now we will now go there and then create. Whenever you have a submit button, we have to submit it. Fine, click on submit. Then only what happens? It will be fully effective now. Otherwise, some of the uh, things will be pulled back. So let us now go there and then we will now create a purchase order. So let us now go there. Go to the purchase orders and now create a purchase order. So click on create order. We are now going to create the order now. So procurement BU is what your BU zero one, and then everything is running. Supplier is B zero one. You will not get the supplier over here now. So click on supplier, supplier site, supplier contact. Everything will be coming. And click on create now. Fine. Use US three legal entity. So you have to do appropriately. I have not done the US three. If you are having US one itself, it is nice actually. If you are getting while you are creating it, associating it. I was not getting the US one at all, so I am now using the US three. And click on create now. So the purchase order is now getting created. So once when you go and then create. <coughs> So go there. Everything is now coming. Fine. Go there. Come on. I will now add the item. Fine. Click on plus. Now I can add the item. So I am going to add it. 
So let me have you have only one item on this. So whatever you are given on your configure procurement business function as well as supplier, they allow supplier is now defaulting, but it's missing. It will now pick up from the configure business function as well as your common options now. Find this thing are coming. I go there. It does not add the item over there. So I know that we have got only one item. Find that on the input item over there. I will now put the base price as three. Whatever you are given, that will be coming on the item now. Item attribute is on a base price two or three. I am not remembering it exactly. So it will now pick up the item attributes. Item fine. There is a two dollar. Thank God that's not it. So it's not. Then give a save now. So if you give a save now itself, it will now throw an error that accrual is missing now. Thank God the quantity is under. So if you go and then save, it will now say accrual account is missing now. Upon save itself, it will now throw an error. Now. The accrual account has not been given. So accrual is required for a purchase order. Now. Whereas only the charge account and variance account are required for requisition actually. Accrual account is missing. So it will now throw an error. Thank God that's not it. You will now go to this place. And then go to the setup and maintenance. <clears throat> save itself will not give you. Go to this place. You now see, see the accrual account is missing. Actually. Upon save itself, it is not coming. But it has saved actually. Purchase order number is missing. The accrual is missing. So let us now go there and set up the accrual. Go to this place. And then here in this place, I go there. I will now go to manufacturing and supply chain management. And then I will now query for the match mapping set. Now. Match percentage. Map percentage. Set percentage is an item now. I will go there. So I will now go to the cost accounting. I will now set the accrual. So go the cost management as I choose them as a scope now. Go to this. So manage mapping set. We will be seeing the receipt accounting as a scope on Monday now. As a scope, as a receipt accounting, we will be seeing it on Monday actually. So it is what's called accrual now. Right? Accrual account organization. So we now go there and go in accrual account organization. We now get added. So if you give a plus now, plus, and then go there, and then drop it down. Choose over BU now. The BU consumer. B B zero one C O E. So accrual accrual is a liability account. Remember, the accrual is a liability account. Frankly, account also. I will not put the organization B zero one one. And then ten hyphen hundred hyphen one thousand one is a liability account. So go on then. Give us seven plus. Now if you go there and then read the document and then if you go to actions validate now accrual problem will not be coming. Put actions validate accrual error will not be coming because accrual account is not set. It will not show some some other error now. Now see whether it shows. Right. So you must enter a requested date or promised date. And then the pure accrual account is not determined. Okay, fine. Go there. Got it. It has only been done now. Then again, go and make a check now. Fine. The accrual is there or not? So go there. The B zero one, and then we have to go and then make a new purchase order. Right? It is already set there actually. And you can cancel now. So it is now saying the promise date and the invalid is not there. Can you cancel now? And let us now make a new order. Let's see. Check it on this. Check on this now. So click on it, and then go there. Click on create order. Then we make a check on this. <coughs> Choose the BU. To be you, and then the procurement view. The supplier is B zero one. Go there, and then click on create. So go down, and then click on add now. Click on plus. We're going to add it. So B zero one. <coughs> Item one. The amount for the quantity is hundred. I should not get the accrual error actually. I'm going to click on save now. I should not get the accrual error. Accrual account has been set actually. You go to actions and then go to validate. You know, see what are the error which is coming. Up. So you must enter a requested date or promised date. Fine, accrual error is no more there. Now, thank you for it. They are not ending. You go know, there. Click on the schedules now. Go to the schedules. And then you put another date. Another date is the mandatory. Fine, go there. Click on it. And then if you are not giving it, fine, go there. In the schedules, if you go there, I am not giving a save now. And if the receipt routing, fine, go there. Click on it. Select it. And then you go to the edit now. The receipt routing is a mandatory field. If it's not there, it will not work at all. Under that, so it is now picking somewhere the standard result. <clears throat> See the defaulting. So based upon which, what happens? Sir? It is now picking up. Okay. Now you don't have any errors at all. Fine. Charge accrual and then variance are required for the purchase order. Fine. Go to the actions and go to validate. You're not getting error. So no error. <clears throat> Aya, we pass the test actually. No errors. Thank you. And if you go to the manage approvals, you'll be seeing these approvals. Similarly, you have to go to manage document approvals and then set. It's already set actually. My application developer is coming. That's it. So we have completed the basic setup of our structure. The branch structure has been completed. I choose and I I start at 9:40 and then at 11:40, 11:20 I will complete. So I have taken one hour and 40 minutes to complete the basic structure actually. Then purchase orders also can be tested for so many things. So once when you are ready with your structure. Then you can do wonders on this one. Right? Your own structure, you can now on any other vision instance, you can do a lot on this one. Any questions on this? Hello.
This is great help, Nana. This is great help. Yeah, it's a power pack kind of like. <laughs> now we'll not fear of uh, getting any uh, what do you call? Uh, yeah, it's just cloud. Yeah. Yes. Up and yeah. running very fast. Yeah. Very, oh. very, very much thankful, Nana. <laughs> Because, like I, I did two, three times, and then I, <laughs> I said no. Now Vijay is good, <laughs> but same now yes, I, I'll, I'll again come back on the track. So watch it, Nana. Take a note, Nana. What happens? Quickly create the enterprise structure for your testing of everything. So many things I bypassed right? because you need to really test the basic things now. Right? The basic uh, like approvals, the accounting, and other things you have to test it. The point, the PR to PO automation you have to test it, and then the touchless buying you have to test it now. And then the consent inventory. Then so many other concepts. Once when you are quick up and then running on your own structure, you can test all those concepts actually very fast. Pramod, is it clear? Avinandan, is it clear? Yeah, sir. Very, very, uh, very nice, sir. Uh, very nice. Uh, It's very fast actually, but uh, yeah, I have to get used to the pace. <laughs> you went like a bullet train, Nana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even I had one uh, one more tea for that. <laughs> Good. Bye for all. Then we'll not meet on Monday, yeah. and then we'll not yeah. do the purchasing accounting, the receipt accounting, and cost accounting, and then we'll not push it to GL also. So I'll not see this. Yeah. And then uh, okay. Tana will be demonstrating the payables accounting also. Okay. Bye for now. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks Nana. Thank you. Thank you, Nana. Thank you very much.